If you happen to be driving along Route 1 in Bath and look down from the bridge, you might notice a ship in the river that's unlike any seen in Maine for a very long time, and that is the point. The vessel is the Virginia, created to celebrate Maine's history of building ships and boats. 207's Don Kerrigan went to the river to see the final result, even if he couldn't take a sail just yet. More than four centuries after her namesake sailed these same waters, the Virginia is making herself known in Midcoast, Maine, a venture that's been about 25 years in the making. It's a great amount of satisfaction. It's <laughs> so many hours and, and sweat and blood go, went into this boat, not just for me, but from this whole cadre of, of dedicated volunteers. For those who haven't followed the saga of the Virginia, this volunteer-built vessel is a replica of a ship of the same name built on this same river by the short-lived Popham colony from England more than 400 years ago. It was the first English-built ship in the New World, and that's why this project that built the new Virginia is called Maine's first ship. I christen the Virginia. Last summer, after more than two decades of research, planning, and fundraising, to say nothing of all that hands-on work by volunteers, Virginia was launched into the Kennebec. And a year later, she is rigged and ready. Crews are being trained, and Maine's first ship is sailing. This is the reward at the end. Going sailing was really my motivation for getting involved in the first place, frankly. Jeremy Blakewell has been part of this project for 10 years. He's now president of the board and is training to be a crewman. It was exhilarating. I was a little anxious, of course, because it's a new thing for me, being part of a big crew like this. In June, Virginia sailed from Bath to Booth Bay Harbor for Windjammer Days, the first real public appearance and the first big test of how this recreation of a historic ship actually sails. The rigors, no one knew. For, you know, for a quarter century, it's been theoretical. Kirsty Trulock is executive director of Maine's first ship. She says no one in New England has sailed a vessel like this for a few hundred years. So they brought in veteran schooner captains and others to help figure it out. And so uh, they were pleasantly surprised how she sailed. Also very happy, she says with how much the crowd liked this sample of Maine history. And I had people all around me going, just ooing and eyeing, you know, what is that ship? Because all of those beautiful schooners um, are sleek and lovely, and they have these white sails that are, you know, they sort of blend into the fog. And then here comes Virginia with her tan bark sails through the fog, and people were just going crazy for her. Every child was like, it's a pirate ship. No pirates, but explorers. The original Virginia and the Popham colony did not stay long in Maine. The little ship, known as a pinnace, then sailed to England and to the Jamestown colony. And so our Virginia will be used to help 21st century school kids and adults understand that 17th century history. It was always to be able to put students on board and to teach them their history with a, this very, you know, place-based history lesson um, and also just to introduce them to sailing ships um, in this city of ships. Because Virginia's other job, maybe a surprise to her builders, is being a tourist attraction in Bath. And that is already happening. This is a very nice attraction. It brings people in the door. It gets them exposed to the history and the story. Uh, of not just the Popham colony, but of shipbuilding on the Kennebec in general. Kirsty says on that trip to Booth Bay, people asked where the ship was from. And then I turned and I said, well, she hails from Bath. And she said, Bath? She said, we had just always drive through right over the bridge. We never stop. She's like, now we're going to have to come down. And that's what we're, that, we want to be that. We want to be that for the city. We want to be able to go out to a few places and be good ambassadors so that people recognize that the city of ships is still very vibrant. Some of that may have to wait. Virginia can't take passengers yet because she's still waiting for certification from the Coast Guard. We couldn't even step on board at the dock. It means only the volunteer crew members can walk the deck for now, literally learning the ropes. No, sorry. Passengers may have to wait till next year. But for those who do go on board, there are times 
moments when the engine is off, when the sails are up and they're at sea, that they get a taste, a feel, for what Virginia is all about. When we were sailing, it was totally surrounded by fog. You couldn't see land, couldn't see any other boats, couldn't really even hear any like modern stuff. So it was, it was very evocative of what they would have been experiencing when they were out and about the coast of Maine. And that's why she was built on a river that has launched so many ships. There is still much to learn from the first one. Thought it was a pirate ship. Yeah. <laughs> so good. So this Virginia does have a modern engine because they need to they need it to be carrying passengers no matter the wind. You can visit the Virginia and the displays and exhibits on shore right in downtown Bath. Hardworking volunteers are always welcome, and Maine's first ship organization still needs donations to cover the ongoing costs as it gets the education and sailing programs up and running.